What's up? Oh, red. Yo, okay, no, no, no. We here virtually, even though it's pre. Okay, nope. Ah. Okay, here we go. Three. That's two. All right, I'm super pumped to be able to share. Uh, honestly, this time is just going to be a quick scripture and a story. And the scripture is in Exodus chapter 3. And Moses has just witnessed the burning bush. He's, he, he's basically ran away from Egypt because Pharaoh was trying to kill him. He sees this burning bush. God approaches him and says this in verse 7. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, mm -mm -mm. the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, speaking to Moses, go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And I love this story because God has a vision for Moses. And if you read on, you see Moses has every excuse in the book as to why he doesn't want to go and do this, you know, do this thing that God's, God had a vision and a plan that you could do this. But Moses was fearful. And I want to share a story with you guys, a real testament to this scripture being true about really want you to think about what what is God's vision for you? Like, I think about Thanos sometimes and the Infinity Gauntlet. Like, like what could I do if I had all the power to do it, right? And I wasn't as afraid to do it. But what could I do? And in a way, having God, right? What, what could I do with God? What could he do with me? And basically, this is a story. If you guys know me, um, then you know that I grew up on every sports field imaginable, um, played basketball, baseball, football growing up, was a starting quarterback, starting pitcher, shortstop, and starting center on my travel basketball team. Um, you know, as a, vars as a freshman in high school, I made varsity pole vault and was a sprinter and mid-distance and jumper and thrower. I, I, I've basically done it all, and most of my life has been characterized by sporting events and sporting fields and skateboarding and snowboarding and frisbee and trick shots and that was my whole identity growing up you know then I became a Christian and I want to share a story with you about basically how God had a vision for me that I never would have expected and that I was absolutely terrified to do and it all started when I was a senior in high school and Ross Lippincott who many of you most likely know likes to come up to me after you know these events and he goes hey Keenan do you want to sing a song at, at you know Friday Night Devo or Youth and Family Devo I was like, uh, I can't sing, and I don't know why you want me to sing, but I'd kind of like have to do it. So I would end up going up there, and if you were there, you might remember this, where I would literally just forget the lyrics all the time. Be like, hell, hell, praise is heard around the world. Oh, that's not it. And then everyone laughed at me, and I was, I would be so nervous every time. So what happened was I would start to hide. Like I would go to Youth and Family Devo, and Ross would... I know he'd be trying to find me, and so I would never say hi to him before the service began, so I wouldn't have to, you know, see him and he'd ask him to do a song. But somehow he'd always find me. He'd always be like, oh, hey, Keenan, one minute before it starts, hey, you, you want to sing a song? I'm like, is mayonnaise an instrument? No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. You know, then I graduated, and, you know, I was moving to UMass Amherst, and they didn't have a worship ministry. I prayed a prayer, and this prayer went, God... I'm tired of like running from this if this is something you really want me to do. I do not want to sing. I do not want to play guitar. And I just just bought my first guitar. I was just learning just for fun. I didn't want to like do anything with it. But I prayed God like this is basically if you don't want me to do this, don't have anyone ever ask me again to lead worship. But if you really want me to do this for you, then... I won't say no anymore and I'll do it every time. Little did I know that prayer and God's vision would change the entirety of my life because literally two days after I prayed this prayer, someone came up to me, one of the brothers at UMass, and he said, hey, Keenan, like, 
bro, how would you feel about starting and co-leading a worship team with me on campus? And I was like, heck no, sir, goodbye. But I couldn't say no because I just prayed, God, I will say yes if this is what you want me to do. And I began to co-lead a worship team at UMass with my little musical knowledge, literally pretty much zero. And then guess what happened? A month later, after I prayed that prayer, I get a call from a random brother from Boston. And we're coming up on our uh, our fall retreat. And he goes, hey, Keenan, like, how would you feel about leading worship at this retreat? And I said, heck no! But somehow I couldn't say no. So all of a sudden, I've been playing guitar for all about six months. Um, I'm leading worship, singing with my voice and playing guitar in front of hundreds of people. And then you won't believe what happened next. One year later, I get a call from the same brother. Hey, we're doing a joint conference with all of New York, all of New Jersey, and all of New England. How would you feel about coming and helping lead worship at this retreat? And I was like, oh, please, God, please. But I couldn't say no because I prayed a prayer that I would say yes if God wanted me to do it. And, you know, there's these stories kind of go on and on. Uh, just leading campus worship and uh, being asked to come to different uh, campus-led Sundays on different campuses and lead worship. And I kid you not, this last year, God gave me the idea I don't know why, with my campus minister to start what we call the Life of Worship group, which was a Bible talk where all we did was uh, invite people to come sing to God with us. And then we do a little a little uh, scripture at the end. And we maxed out the room the very first night and studied the Bible with multiple people who came out to this event. And so my question is, what is God's vision for you? What do you, what are you terrified of? Because I know the world says, hey, you're not musical or you're this. Let's say, you know, you're, you're put in a box of being this type of person, right? And you're like, man, I can never see myself doing that. I, I'm just too scared. I, I can't imagine what people will think, right? That's just not me, right? Look at Moses. What happened when he was terrified, didn't know what he was going to do, trying to make every excuse of the book to not go save these uh, Israelites? God used his faith. And God used his ability to say, all right, God, I'll do it. And he saved an entire nation from Egypt through the method of going back and negotiating with the person who was trying to kill him in the first place. Like, like that doesn't make any sense, right? In the same way, I've never picked up a guitar in my life and then a year later I'm playing in front of hundreds of people to glorify God. Like, what could God use you for? And I just want to encourage you. Um, someone said to me once, uh, or I read it in a book, it says that everything you want to be is on the opposite side of fear, right? And Satan uses fear to cripple you and to hold you back from what God's plans really are for your life. But who you really want to be and who God's calling you, even though it's uncomfortable and scary, what would it look like for you to study the Bible? What would it look like for you to, to really take this walk with God seriously and then what would it take for you to, to put the faith in him, to trust, to see, man, God, where do you want to take me? And then see where he says. And so I really wanted to encourage you guys with that message to really see two stories of how God can have a vision for your life and does have a vision for your life and is waiting to take you on an adventure that you would have never imagined. And so um, I hope this was helpful and I hope that you can really think about and dream about what God has in store and what God's vision is for you.